This is the second in our series of videos presenting the answers to the Fall 2016 CE 300 midterm exam. This is a question about ethics. It tests the student's knowledge of the fundamental canons of engineering and their ethical judgment. In this case, an engineer has two clients. The first is a private client, and the engineer prepares a report um, recommending uh, ways to mitigate, in this case mitigate means reduce the risk of environmental hazards with a certain mining proposal. The engineer is paid with a percentage of the mining revenues. If the mine ever gets built, then it does well, then the engineer collects a bunch of money. Years later, the client submits a proposal or an application to the federal government to actually build the mine. But the engineer is hired by the federal government to review it. Someone at the federal government evidently doesn't know about the arrangement, the stake that the engineer has in the mine, and the engineer discovers that the application, as it's been submitted, does not incorporate the recommendations to mitigate environmental hazards. So that's our setup. The question asks students, which are the fundamental canons of engineering that apply to a case like this? So we're going to go over the fundamental canons one by one, and we're going to ask ourselves, do they apply or do they not? The first is, hold paramount the safety, health, and welfare of the public. In this case, because there are environmental issues, I think it's pretty clear that the hold paramount public safety canon applies. Next, we'll evaluate perform services only in areas of their competence. In this case, the engineer seems well qualified to do work related to mines and their environmental hazards, so I don't see any issue related to areas of competence that relates to the case as it's been described. Issue public statements only in an objective and truthful manner. There are no statements to the public. The first report that the mining engineer did was for a private client and that's not a public report. The second one is to the federal government, and it's possible that the review could be discovered under the Freedom of Information Act, but there's nothing that the engineer is putting in a mining permit or mining application review that is meant to be released to the public. It would only be released to the public later. It's written for other technical experts and bureaucrats within the federal government who are evaluating the merits of the application, so I don't see how the public statements um, fundamental canon applies. Act for each employer or client as a faithful agent. And that includes, especially in the American Society of Civil Engineers, avoiding conflicts of interest. So in this case, faithful agent. How can the engineer both act as a faithful agent to the private client and to the new client, the federal government? In this case, the obligation to act as a faithful agent may be to two different clients with opposing interests uh, comes to bear. Also, avoid conflicts of interest. Because the engineer has a financial stake in the success of the mine and now has been hired by the federal government to review or approve the application, there is at least the appearance of a conflict of interest that should be avoided. So the faithful agent canon definitely applies. Build their professional reputation on the merit of services and not compete unfairly with others. There are no competitive issues in this case that I can see as it's been presented to us, and so I don't think that canon applies. Conduct themselves honorably, responsibly, ethically, and lawfully. It's a very broad canon. Um, and the American Society of Civil Engineers uh, describes it as honor, integrity, and dignity, and adds with zero tolerance for bribery, fraud, or corruption. It could apply to almost any case because this canon is written so broad, but in particular, the conflict of interest and the financial rewards that may accrue to the engineer if the mine is approved might be construed not as a bribe necessarily, but as corruption. And so this fundamental canon might apply to our case. Continue professional development throughout their careers and provide opportunities for the professional development of others. I don't see professional development opportunities in this case as it's been described. Uh, and finally, avoid deceptive acts. There is nothing here that the engineer has done, at least not yet, which is deceptive and no call to be deceptive. I don't see how deceptive acts applies to this case. So we've identified 
three fundamental canons that apply to the case that's been described. Each one of these is worth 20%. Then recommend a course of action to the engineer. In this case, because the engineer has an obligation to avoid conflicts of interest and act to uphold the honor, integrity, and dignity of the profession, my recommendation is to recuse from the review. And by recuse, what I mean is uh, inform the federal government, disclose to the federal government the conflict of interest, and decline to perform the review. This allows the government to hire another qualified mining engineer to perform an objective review without the appearance of conflict of interest. Well, how does that act as a faithful agent to the client? Perhaps the engineer would feel uh, as a faithful agent to the client, they should perform the re a favorable review for the federal government and hope that the mine gets approved. But that's not being a faithful agent. Think of them in, self, in this case as a member of the application. They're now an owner, not just a client, and certainly acting in such a way that might impeach the integrity of the review is not a good thing to do, not being a faithful agent to their original client. So our recommendation is to disclose the conflict and recuse from the review to allow the federal government to hire another competent engineer to perform it. This together, the recommendation is worth 40% for a total of 100% of the credit available on this page.